Good morning, church. It's Friday morning. Take your Bibles and let's go back to chapter 26 as Paul is given a defense of his life and uh, he's giving it before King Agrippa, also before the governor Festus and others. And he just simply told them what God was doing in his life, how he used to be a Pharisee, how he used to persecute Christians. He met Jesus on the road to Damascus. He was converted. And now he just simply goes around the world telling everybody how to be saved, Jews and Gentiles. And that's why he's being persecuted. That's why he's on trial. In verse number 24, it says, Now as he thus made his defense, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, you are beside yourself. Much learning is driving you mad. Now, the gospel does seem to the Greeks to be foolishness. And Festus is more Greek. His wife is a Jew, but he himself is not. And he says, what you're talking about is just foolishness. You've gone mad. You met somebody who's dead on the road to Damascus, and this has changed your life. You got to be an idiot. You know, what are you doing spouting these things? Now, this is not the first time that Festus would have heard these things, but I think he is just uh, saying, Paul, you, you're just, you're ignorant to, to hang on to these beliefs. Verse 25, but he said, Paul, I'm not mad, most noble Festus, but I speak the words of truth and reason. In other words, uh, I, I'm telling you exactly what happened, and it's reasonable that these things, this, this is what happened. For the king whom, before whom I am speaking freely knows these things. For I'm convinced that none of these things escape his attention since the things, this, is, this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa's been around. He knows these things. He's heard the gospel before. So he says in verse 27, King Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know that you do believe. Then Agrippa said to Paul, you almost persuade me to become a Christian. And Paul said, I would to God that not only you, but also all who hear me today might become both almost and altogether such as I am, except for these chains. But when he had said these things, the king stood up and as well the governor and Bernice and those who sat with them. And when they had gone aside, they talked among themselves saying, this man is doing nothing deserving of death or chains. Then Agrippa said to Festus, this man might have been set free if he had not appealed to Caesar. So Paul, after Festus's outbreak, says, King Agrippa, you, you know what I'm talking about. You've heard these things before. You, you believe the prophets. You know what the prophet says, that the Messiah must suffer. Uh, obviously, that's out of Isaiah 51 and 52, 53. Uh, you'll, you'll find the suffering servant in those verses. You'll find that he was to be raised from the dead. You'll find in the scriptures of the prophets that the, the gospel would be preached to the Gentiles. All these things were things that were in the Jewish Old Testament. So, so you know these things to be true. And so I'm only being persecuted for preaching what the prophets have already declared. And then King Agrippa says something, and um, we don't really know how to take it. Some take it as him saying, Paul, are you trying to convince me in this short period of time to become a Christian? Others say, he's saying, Paul, I understand your argument. I almost agree with it. I'm almost ready to become a Christian. And, and Paul, in his answer, seems to take it that way. I wish you were almost and all together, not just you, but everyone who heard the gospel today would be as I am that you would be as convinced of the truth of the gospel, be converted and filled with the Holy Spirit, forgiven of sin on the way to heaven. I, I wished you were all together as I am, except for these chains. Uh, I don't want you to have to be persecuted like I am, but for these chains. Now, again, the invitation was not, okay, all, the, all of y'all who want to come and receive Jesus come down here. But he offers them an opportunity to believe. He gives them the, this to say, you need to believe these things. I wish you would receive these things. Now, he doesn't beg or belabor the point. He, he's not trying to convince people in the sense of if he could talk them into becoming a Christian. 
He's just laying out the truth. This is who Jesus is. This is what Jesus has done. This is what he's done in my life. And if you want to receive Jesus, just open your heart unto him. He would receive you even right now. As we go forth today, it's important for us to share the gospel every day. That's what we're saved for. That's what we're filled with the Holy Spirit for. When you become my disciples, you're to go into all the world and be my witnesses. And you're to tell people about me, Jesus said, and to bring them to salvation and baptism and and then to teach them to, be, to, to observe and to obey the things I commanded them. That's our responsibility. And every believer needs to be doing that. If we're not, then we're disobedient. And so whenever God gives you an opportunity, if you're not sure what else to say, just talk about what Jesus did in your life. When someone's complaining how their life is falling apart and all the bad things that are happening to them, just say, you know, one day I, I kind of felt like in my life, that, that things were, were going awry and I, I was just confused and I didn't know what to do. And, and God spoke to me concerning salvation and I turned to Jesus and ever how it leads into your personal testimony and talk to them about how Jesus has changed your life and then give them an opportunity to also respond. Wouldn't you like to have that in your life? I, I want you to have the things I have, as Paul said to 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 King Agrippa, I wish all of you had what I have in Christ. I, I want you to be uh, like myself, one who's been converted unto be a follower of Jesus Christ. And give them an opportunity. Oftentimes, and that's the situation here, you have very little fruit or no fruit. Oftentimes. But there are times when you will make fruit. But here, listen to this. You are making every person accountable for whom you've talked to. Throughout eternity, if they reject the gospel, that scenario of you sharing the gospel will be played over and over, not just you, but when their parents did, when they heard an evangelist on TV, or when another friend did, when they were at church one time and went to a baccalaureate service and they heard the gospel, every opportunity that they had to hear the gospel will be played over and over through eternity. And in their mind, they'll be able to say that I had an opportunity and I did not. That'll be what hell will be so severe on those who had much light because they would have had so many opportunities to miss out on hell. And all they had to do is turn to Jesus and, and ask for the forgiveness of sin and commit themselves unto his authority as King of all kings and Lord of all lords. Let's pray together. Father, we do thank you that you allow us the privilege of being witnesses, that we have met Jesus, have such a real relationship with you through Christ our Lord, that we can go and tell others about what you have done in our lives. As we go forth today, please make us fruitful. Help us, Father, to be able to, to see some folks who might accept and acknowledge that Jesus is their Lord, turning away from sin and embracing Jesus as their Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.